Today we're going to be in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. We're going to take a look at having faith like Mary. Now, in Scripture, we see that there's two different kinds of people. In Scripture and really in life, there's two different kinds of people. Right? You have the people that you want to look up to, that you want to be like. But then you also have the second kind of person that you say, don't be like that person. Learn from their mistakes, right? Do not be like them. And the Scripture has, has both these kinds of people. I mean, first, no parent is going to look at their child and say, I really hope you grow up and are just like Cain. No, there's no parent that's going to say that. Myself included, there's no dad that's going to look at their daughter and say, you need to pattern your life after Jezebel. It's not going to happen. And we're not going to look at our friends and say, you know what? I love how you're acting more like Judas Iscariot each and every day. It's, it's not going to work well, is it? We don't want them to be like these people. But we do say things like, you know what? You, I hope and pray that you grow up and are a man after God's own heart. Have faith like Peter. Or have the same attitude as Lydia. We have these examples in Scripture of people to be like. And I honestly believe that Mary is one of those that we need to pattern our faith after. And today I want to point out a couple different things here. First of all being that Mary's life was interrupted. Mary's life was interrupted. If you read with me in verse 26, chapter 1. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. You see, no one likes to be interrupted, do we? I don't know about you, but I hate being interrupted whenever I'm talking, especially by my kids. Have you ever been interrupted by your kids before? Having a conversation, they come in and they interrupt you. Um, None of us like to be interrupted, and we certainly don't like for our lives to be interrupted, do we? Many days, there's times that our lives get interrupted. We have it all scheduled. We have it all planned out. But God comes in and shakes things up. Well, Mary had her life planned out. She was betrothed to a man named Joseph. She was looking forward to that grand wedding day. She was a good little Jewish girl, as I'll call it. A typical girl, just living her life like any other Jewish girl would be. But there was something different about Mary. It wasn't how she was living her life. It was concerning her heart and the faith that she had in the Lord. And this led the Lord to intervene and to interrupt Mary's life. You know, this angel showed up. Now let me tell you, when God sends an angel to you, your life's going to be interrupted. Right? And today, since we have the Holy Spirit, when God speaks to you, your life is going to be interrupted. So it's best if we slow down and we pay attention. Because He's going to have something great to share with us. But listen, not all interruptions are bad, right? Promotions at work, that's a pretty good interruption. New babies, new opportunities in life. Uh, but we're creatures of habit. And anytime something comes out by our routine, we feel interrupted. And Mary was no exception to this. So this angel shows up and interrupts Mary's life. How is it going to interrupt? She was about to become pregnant with a child that was not the child of the man she was betrothed to. Okay? Jewish law was very strict about this. If a woman was pregnant out of wedlock, that was horrible. But being betrothed to a man and then having a child that wasn't his, that was even worse. Almost to the point that she could be stoned. Hey, it wasn't just, oh, I'm going to be an outcast. No, her life was literally on the line here. And the angel was coming and saying, hey, Mary, the Lord wants you 
to have faith and trust in Him to do this. Her social circles, or circles, her social circles would be strained. Her friendships would be strained. Her family would be strained. Friends, her plans for life were completely interrupted. And she could have said no, but she didn't. Because she had a great faith. A faith like we need to have. She accepted the interruption in her life. And friends, whenever the Lord wants to interrupt your life, now listen, when He wants to interrupt your plans, your life, your goals, your money, your hobbies, your marriage, your job, your traditions, your idols, listen. Listen. My life was interrupted in a great way. The summer before my junior year of high school. Now, I'm your administrative pastor, so I like to be scheduled, right? I like to be planned. Well, God tested that in a great and mighty way back before I was a junior in high school. I went to a summer camp in Oklahoma called Falls Creek. You may have heard of it. I have a love-hate relationship with that camp. One, I go because I know I'm going to look forward to hanging out with friends and have a lot of fun. Secondly, I hate it because I know I'm going to come back chained. Okay? Because God works at Falls Creek. But let me share this with you. As soon as I got there that summer, he said, Cody, I want you to be in the ministry. I want you to be my servant and, and reach people. I'm like, Lord, I already have plenty. And so I ignored it. And day after day went by that week, God knocking on the door of my heart saying, hey, I have something I want you to do. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I was like Moses. I was like, God, I'm, I'm afraid of talking in front of people. Don't you know that? You, you created me. You know I'm shy. I won't even talk to my grandparents. Why are you wanting me to get up in front of a lot of people and, and preach your word? You know what he said? Have faith. Trust me. Like, Lord, I'm going to have to. Because there's no way I can do it on my own. I said, Lord, have it your way. I'm yours. And that... uh. A few, few months later, I was preaching my first sermon. It was only five minutes long, but I preached a sermon. All right? The Lord interrupted my life. You know, I wanted to be a psychiatrist, go to OU, have all the money, have the fancy cars, do all these things. I had many plans. But you know, I've never once looked back and said, you know what? I should have said no to God. I never once have said that. Why? Because I know this life is much greater and blessed than the other life would have ever been. And friends, God wants to change your life here today. No matter what age you are, no matter where you're at in your life, God loves you and He wants to bless you. But with, but with great blessing, it requires great faith. So let's learn from Mary here and how she saw that her life was interrupted. And she said yes. Let's face it, Mary's not the only person in the Bible to have their, their life interrupted. The Apostle Paul, he was en route to Damascus and his life was, life was interrupted. Right? We have Peter and Andrew. Their life was interrupted when they were just out fishing one day. The jailer's life was interrupted by an, an immense earthquake that ultimately led to his entire family being rescued by the Lord Jesus. Our lives can be interrupted. But that interruption isn't always bad. It's good. But friends, listen. Even if you ignore the interruptions today or tomorrow, there will be one day when God comes and interrupts everybody's life. There'll be one day coming very, very soon that the Lord comes and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. No matter if they're saying yes to the interruption or not, they will be interrupted. So Mary's life was interrupted. Secondly, Mary's faith was tested. Look at verse 31. 
says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and shall name him Jesus. He'll be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. But Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered her and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason also the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. See, Mary didn't have all the answers when she said yes. She, she would become pregnant without being with a man. She would be with child before the proper time. She would be uh, with child that wasn't even her husband's. And listen, she would name her son Jesus, which that would raise an eyebrow because no one in our family had that name. That name, Jesus. You ever just sit and, and just say that name? The sweetest name in all the earth, Jesus. Started here. Mary's faith was tested. She had to say no to this and no to that and no to all her plans and say yes to everything the Lord had told her to do. Every detail. And she had to live it out. Because all these things would be tested in her life. So Mary had a question. And friends, we have questions, don't we? In our life, we have questions. He asked, well, why did this happen? Why didn't that happen? Lord, why, why are you not letting me sleep? And why, why is my four-year-old daughter still getting up every night and coming to my bed and kicking me in the middle of the night? And Sorry, that might just be a little personal for me. but uh, <laughs> we, we all have questions. I just asked that this morning, honestly. Um, but the Lord may not give us the answer because He wants us to have faith. When God calls us to do something, guess what? Sometimes it takes blind faith. 100% faith in Him. Now, whenever I was taking my very first pastorate, oh, the Lord tested my faith in that, let me tell you. I was doing the best I ever had, you know, when you look from a worldly perspective, uh, being a youth minister of a, of a you know, decent-sized church, making the most money I had ever had, Nick Taylor was had a great job, and we had the two boys, and you know, we were living down in Texas, in Egypt, if I call it, you know, beyond the Red Sea there, beyond the Red River. So uh, I, we were down there enjoying ourselves. But then this church calls, and the first thing out of this woman's mouth was, "Hey, what what do you think about church replanting?" I said, "Well, you have my attention, and first of all, how do you know that terminology?" I was a church planner for a couple of years and I have some background in it. It's like, well, we were interested since you have that background and uh, we're, we're needing some help. So I end up having a conversation with them and then I go and talk with the committee and I even go there to the town and look at the church and look at what's going on and I'm like, man, Lord, this is... I don't know if this place has much hope. It needs a lot of help, a lot of work. And ultimately, I said no. But then, talk about no sleep. When you tell God no, you're not going to get much sleep, let me tell you. And after those days went by, I just wrestled with it and wrestled with it. And I was like, Lord, we're comfortable here. Okay, Key word number one, comfortable, right? Lord, we... We just bought a house. If you're on the committee with me, come here. You all know about this. So that was a second round of that. Okay? We, we just bought a house 10 months prior to this conversation. Just 10 months. Lord, we just bought a house. We're comfortable. We're enjoying life. Hey, Cody, have faith. Trust in me. Okay. And so reluctantly, I picked up the phone. I called the committee and said, hey, have you found a pastor yet? Hey, this was like three, three days later. I was trying to break the ice with them. And like, no. I said, I'm your man. I'm your man. I've just been praying, and I, I, I'm your man. And so we, we went, and I tell you what, 
the Lord prevailed. Our house sold. Actually, it sold the first time within three weeks. But then they drug it out and it fell, long story short. But God took care of us and house sold. We went there. I went in view of a call that morning. In that church that sat about 250 people, I was preaching to 20 souls. 20 people. Taking a $30,000 pay cut. It's like, Lord, you're, uh, you're going to have to show out in this. I mean, I was sick to my stomach. It was taking just so much faith. Y'all ever been there? You just, physically, you just can't do it. And so I gave it all to Him. And uh, the Lord was with us, and honestly, that's probably the best couple of years we've ever had in ministry because of the great faith that we had. You know, when you're walking in faith, whenever you're walking in the Spirit of God, even though physically and mentally it doesn't make much sense, God is carrying you. And that is the best place for you to be. You know, the Proverbs tells us not to lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge Him, and He'll make our path straight. So turn our, your eyes to Jesus. Turn your eyes to Jesus. When He calls you to have faith, have that great faith in the Lord. Because let me tell you, nothing is too difficult for Him. If he tells you to do it, He's not going to just drag you in it and drop you. Right? He wasn't going to take me to that town and say, hey, you're done. The church is going to close. You're going to be out without a job. Your family's going to be on the street. No. He wasn't going to do that. When the Lord called us away from that church, we were running 80. Okay? What a great increase that God provided there. And met some great friends and, and families. And oh, the Lord blessed there. But Genesis 18 14, it starts out Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Okay? Is anything? We know the answer is no to that. In Jeremiah 32, it says, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing. Last time I checked, the word nothing meant nothing. Nothing in this world, nothing you can conjure up in your mind, nothing you can even imagine is too difficult for God. So no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what you're facing, we could go to everyone in this room and everyone would have something different, a different storm you're going through. I can tell you from the Word of God, there is nothing too difficult for God. He will raise you up and carry you through any storm. He'll look at you and and call you into the fire and the flames and He'll grab your hand and He'll walk you right through it. There's nothing that's too difficult for Him. Jesus even said this in Matthew 19.26. With people, this is impossible. But with God, you all finish that with me? All things are possible. So Mary's life was interrupted. Mary's faith was tested. Lastly, Mary accepted God's plan. You know, whenever God calls out to you, I believe you can say no. I believe the Lord has given us that free will to choose. But Mary said yes. And we see that great blessing upon her. And here, look at verse 28. We're going to go back a little bit. It says, And coming in, He said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and was pondering what kind of greeting this was. And drop down to verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the Lord's bondservant May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So with her accepting God's plan, listen, first of all, Mary had found favor with the Lord. I mentioned in the very beginning, the Lord knows your heart. He saw Mary's heart and the faith that she had. You know, friends, you don't have to worry about anybody else spiritually outside of yourself. Think about it. Now, we, we are concerned with other people. Don't get me wrong. We need to pray for other people's souls and their salvation and discipling them. But when it comes down to you, you are the only one that can grow in your relationship with the Lord. No one else can do that for you. 
you're the only one that can receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your mom can't do that for you. Your dad can't do that for you. Grandma or grandpa can't do that for you. That is your decision. Because, listen, God can see and knows your heart. And here we find that favor, or Mary had found this favor with the Lord because He saw her heart. We see others finding favor in God's sight. Remember Noah? But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Gideon. So Gideon said to him, if, I, if now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who, who, it is you who speaks with me. Friends, when it comes to favor, the emphasis is on God's sovereign choice, not on human acceptability. It is based on God's gracious choice, not our particular piety that we have in our lives. Listen, Mary was an imperfect sinner just like I am, just like you are. But the Lord saw diff something different in her and wanted to use her in a great and mighty way. So because of her faith and what she did, we were able to see God's face for the first time. You know, when I think of the baby Jesus, I just can't imagine looking at His face. Looking into the eyes of God. And, and thinking about how Mary was blessed. If nothing else happened in her life, but just the blessing of holding baby Jesus, holding the Messiah, holding salvation, holding God in her arms, just for that one moment. Wasn't it worth it all? Friend, God wants to bless you. And He wants to show you in your life how He wants to do a great work. So when God interrupts your life, when God tests your faith, will you receive it? Will you accept it? Will you say, yes, Lord, may it be done to me according to your work? And it won't, may not always be fun. One of these days you may get a call, hey, you get a great promotion, you got to move here, it's going to be a blessing, you're going to be closer to your family and friends or whatever. That would be great. You know, sometimes the Lord doesn't work that way, though. They say, this is going to be a struggle. But you're going to have to have complete faith in all that you do here. Will you trust me? Friends, I can honestly say, God is trustworthy. He hasn't broken one promise, has He? Brother Steve, I don't think He's broken a promise to you. Ted, has He broken a promise to you? No. He hasn't broken a promise to me. And He hasn't broken a promise ever. That means you can trust Him with all that you are. So when the Lord speaks, don't ignore Him. Mary received the unfilling word into her life. Saying, Lord, may, may Your will be done in my life. She had questions. You know what? We also will have questions. That's okay. If you trust Him with all that you have. Listen, if the Lord answered all our questions, we wouldn't have to have much faith, would we? <laughs> if there was nothing to uh, question, then we, if we knew everything, there would be no purpose in having faith. Faith is trust. And trusting means not knowing or understanding everything ourselves. So will you receive God's plan for your life? Will you receive that? You know, growing up in western Oklahoma, I got very familiar with watching tornadoes. I don't mean just on the television. I mean, stepping outside, we're out there on the open plains. Anyone been to western Oklahoma? Okay, out there with the cotton patches and the wheat crops and the rolling plains and the tumbleweeds. My wife had never seen a tumbleweed until she married me and I took her out back home. Okay? It's like, what in the world is that giant weed? I'm like, that's a tumbleweed. But listen, out there I watched storm, the storm clouds would build. I run outside. 
I wouldn't watch the weather, man. I would run outside. The sirens would go off. Boy, we were running outside to watch. I don't know how many tornadoes I just saw going across the open field. I tell you what, in, 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 in thinking back to that, I was thinking, were we crazy or what? <laughs> Get in the cellar. <laughs> it, there was one time I remember, it was, it was several years ago, there was a, a, a huge EF5, one of the strongest tornadoes ever, that came through Mustang and, and Yukon area. Um, El Reno killed several storm chasers during that time period. And at that time, my family lived in Yukon, and we were there. And uh, we actually were in the neighbor's house down in their cellar. Um, this is one I did not run outside to see. Okay? They were saying, if you're not underground, you will die. So we definitely got in the ground. Ephraim was just a little baby. We got down the cellar and was riding that one out. So the whole time I was there, I was thinking, you know, I was praying, Lord, keep us safe, keep us safe. It came to my mind, if we were still in the house, this is completely hypothetical, if you were in the house or I were in the house and that storm was coming and Jesus physically, literally was sitting there beside you, he said, son, daughter, come here. Sit down by me. It's okay. There's nothing to fear. The sirens were going off. The plates on the wall started rattling and falling off. You could hear the wind soaring around you. The windows started breaking. Glass started flying. And you kept looking at Jesus and he kept saying, it's okay. Trust me. How many of you would say, you're crazy, I'm going to the cellar? I mean, think about it. How many of us have that blind faith in the Lord that in that situation, we would just take a deep breath, grab his hand, and know you were perfectly safe, that nothing would harm you or take your life because he was right there with you. Friends, because he is right there with you. Okay? He's living within you. And even though we can't see Him physically, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ is living in you. Lifting you up day in and day out, no matter what you're facing, no matter what the trials are. Friends, the Lord lifted up Mary. The will, God's will was done through Mary's life. The embodiment of John 3.16 was given by God through Mary. Will you trust the Lord as Mary did? No matter what it will cost you, no matter what relationships it will cost you, no matter if it costs you your job, your retirement, your friends, your family, will you abide in God's Word and let His Word and His will be done in your life? Friends, Mary was interrupted, she was tested, but yet she accepted. Will you have faith like Mary? Will you have that faith like Mary? Friends, the Lord loves you. I believe that's what Christmas is all about. is seeing God's love come forth to you. you know, we, we, we all know John 3.16, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, Jesus. Jesus, the most wonderful name in all the earth. The name of Jesus. Friends, I just pray that during this Christmas season, we won't get in all the hustle and bustle of the gifts and the Christmas trees and the decorations, which I love Christmas. If you've seen my house, if you haven't, it's on Facebook, okay? Look up Nicola's thing. She put it all on there. I love it. But our focus has to be the true reason for the season. Now, I, I, this year, it cost my eyes. Like, you know what? I just need to get a little manger and put it in front of my Christmas. So my focus will always be on the right the greatest gift of all came that very first Christmas. And we are so thankful for the faith that Mary had. And I pray that we all will have a great faith like that Amen. when God does come and interrupt our lives. Which is coming soon.
could be today, could be tomorrow. Friends, He always interrupts our life. Amen? So keep your ears open and say yes. Because He's not done with you yet. He'll be done with you whenever you're in heaven with Him. If you're here, He's not done with you yet. You will bow your heads with me. Father, we are so grateful for You. Lord, for all that You've given us. Lord, I thank You for Mary and the faith that she had. Father, I thank You for her example. Lord, what a great one to to look up to and and to be like. Father, I pray that, Lord, during this Christmas season, we wouldn't lose focus of the true reason for the season. Lord, You sent Your one and only Son. Lord, not to just come here to, to live and have a good time, but Lord, to come and live a perfect life. To give His life for us. That anyone who would call upon His name would be saved. So Lord, I pray that today, if there's one in here that does not yet know You, they don't have that personal relationship with You, Father, this morning, will You break their heart? Will You open their eyes to Your truth, Lord? Will You pull them to Yourself? And let them know that You love them, Lord, and that they need You. Lord, I pray that this morning if there's one that Lord just needs to recommit their life, that just needs to get things right, that needs to be more open to hearing about your plan for their life and saying yes, pray God that you would move in them. Lord, we thank you for all that are here. And Lord, if there's one in here that would like to join the church, I pray that today would be the day. Lord, we just love you so much. And we thank you for your word and for guidance each and every step of the way. But we just give you this invitation now and pray, God, that you would use it according to your will. And all God's people said, amen and amen. If you would please stand with me now, the invitation is open.